Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. This week, we're talking about genes and epigenetics. I think most of us are familiar with genes, right? That's genes with a G, like G-E-N-E, not clothing genes, like J-E-A-N-S. Okay. (laughs) So our genes with a G or our genetics are the blueprint, right? That'll come back up in a second, but let's explain it this way. So genes are segments of DNA, and it's the DNA that's responsible for human structure, right? Genetics is the study of genes and heredity, meaning our genes indicate what's passed from generation to generation. So it's the traits that we inherit from our parents and our ancestors. And probably you learned about this in you know middle school or high school science, right? It's a lot of, when we learn about it, it's a lot about eye color and you know attached or detached earlobes, <laughs> right? But there's really so much more to it. And In our episodes, we've talked about genes before when we talked about cravings and in a few other episodes, but it's interesting because craving for salty food or sugary foods can be a function of genetics. There are genetic factors to whether we have a greater propensity to insulin resistance. And, you know, a lot of times when it comes to our health, we often think of our genetics as our family history. And I think there is a distinction that we need to make here. Because family history is not always an indication of genetics. Because you know what families also tend to share? Lifestyle and habits. The impact of lifestyle and habits is known as epigenetics. So epigenetics is the study of how your behaviors and environment can affect how your genes express. So here's how I like to think of it. You have the gene, right? So you have your gene, think of it like your fist, and then epigenetics is everything that surrounds the gene. So if you were to sort of take your other hand that's not in a fist and like wrap it around your fist, that's how I think about the epigenetics. It's what we bathe our genes in. And the result is that depending on what you bathe your genes in, you can essentially turn up or turn down the volume on your genes. So Yes, exactly. (laughs) Like genetics are not your destiny because we can, through lifestyle, for lack of a better word, manipulate what genes turn on and off. Now, I used to work with a DNA test and it looked at your genes and specifically gave lifestyle recommendations. One of the things that it does in your assessment is that it gives you an obesity score, a number between zero and 10 indicating your genetic propensity to obesity. You want to know what my score was? (laughs) My genetic propensity to obesity is an 8.6 out of 10. Now, one of my mentors, he was a former professional football player. His propensity toward obesity was an (laughs) 8.2. So it gives you an indication like this is significant. And essentially what I learned from this number, I guess is twofold. The first thing is that it wasn't a coincidence when there were times in my life when I felt like I would breathe and gain weight. And two, and I think this is the more important thing, is that if I didn't do everything I do, my health would be very different. So quick sidebar, because I know you're all thinking, wait, how do you get this test? I want this test. So the lab that used to do this test went offline to this genetic testing during COVID. It turned over to be 100% COVID testing. It hasn't yet come back online. However, I am in conversation with another company that offers something similar. So I'll keep you posted. I'm doing that first to test it and see what it's like before I make any recommendations to anybody else. So I will keep you posted. Okay, so back to today's conversation of genes and epigenetics. So where does the research leave us? So according to the research, what do you think are the lifestyle factors that they've identified which modify genetic patterns? Are you ready for this? It's going to sound frighteningly familiar. Research shows diet, as in nutrition, obesity, physical activity, tobacco smoking, 
alcohol consumption, environmental toxins, psychological stress, and working night shifts, which impact sleep, right, are key lifestyle factors to watch. Sound familiar, (laughs) right? This is what we talk about all the time. What this means is that while you can't change your genes, your lifestyle can impact them. It's not that our lifestyle changes the gene sequence, that we can't change. But what lifestyle does do is adjust the magnitude of the impact of various genes. So like I said before, I think of it like a volume dial. So I personally have a genetic variation that makes me more likely to have increased BMI, a predisposition to obesity, a predisposition to insulin resistance, increased cravings. I also have a gene that's sort of connected to addictive behavior, which is interesting when it comes to food choices and habits. And what they also see in the research, by the way, is that habits and food choices early in life play a big role in turning up or turning down the volume on such genes. And the things I do today impact it too. And for me, the most magical thing about epigenetics is that they're not permanent. You can change things in your life, manage stress, focus on sleep, focus on regular activity and exercise, eat nourishing foods, and you'll see the gene expression change. Because as we adjust that bath, right, the epigenetics changes too as we make different choices. The catch is it requires consistency, (laughs) but that is why we're here, right? This is what we talk about every single week. If you tune in to Salad with a Side of Fries and you focus on the simple steps to your healthiest life, we can actually adjust how your genes are impacting you. So while we can't change your genes, you can change your epigenetics. And this means that what's been the case for you up until now doesn't have to be the case for you going forward. And even if you inherit some genes giving you a predisposition to certain conditions, whether related to metabolic health or other things, you're not doomed. I'll say it again. You're not doomed. And your health is in your hands. So there you have it, my friends. The story for today on genes and epigenetics. Well, As always, everybody, I'm your host, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram or all social media. I'm at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Website is a salad with a side of fries. Wherever you want to go, website or your favorite social media platform, please send a message. Share your ideas for episodes or nutrition nuggets, your key takeaways. What questions do you have? This is also the easiest way to learn more about working with me as your health coach. And if you're not already a member, I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> now is the time. Go to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries. Becoming a member shows your support for this podcast, this community, and most importantly, supports your health. You'll get this week's recipes for the crunchy baby bok choy slaw, the strawberry nice cream, plus 20% off my 12-week program, either group or one-on-one. You get to choose as long as you start by June 30th, 2023. All right, we did it. 200 strong and continuing. So until next week, and really always, remember, by tuning in to Salad with a Side of Fries podcast each week, you are powerful. You are a powerful force in wellness, and your health is yours to create. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform. Share us with a friend and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy.